When it comes to optimizing one's diet, there are so many factors in play that finding the best diet becomes a very complex task, especially with all the new trendy diets out there. People are very different in the way they digest foods, absorb nutrients and utilize energy. This is where nutrigenomics comes in play. It takes advantage of genetics so we can get a clearer image of what our body needs in terms of nutrition. It can give us helpful insight to structure a diet specific for the individual based on our genes. Hello there. Today we're going to talk about nutrigenomics, a little bit of a different topic. Nutrigenomics is the relationship, studies the relationship of genes and nutrition for better health. Now to give you some context here, why do we do this? I have read a large book that emphasizes the differences between humans, their genetic profiles and the uh, nutrition or the way they eat food for fuel and how uh, the same foods can be bad for someone and good for others. And so the point is, how can we optimize and individualize a nutrition or meal plan uh, to structure it to fit the needs of one person with a specific genetic profile? So uh, to get to this blog, you can go at vitalsend.com and just type in nutrigenomics. Uh, the first one that pops out is this one. Welcome. So uh, the main point of nutrigenomics is the relationship of genes and nutrition. Okay. Now many people try to sort of quantify food and say this food is the best. Uh, this food has this many macros and this many micro. Uh, nutrients, uh, this food has that much calories and this one's better because it's lower in calorie but food isn't just number, food isn't just an easy thing to quantify, it isn't just a source of energy that we measure through calories uh, but it is also very tightly related to the way we feel and to our appetite and to supporting many functions in our body from hormone health, from hormone secretion, reproductive health, bone strength, muscular growth, uh, fatigue, regeneration, optimal sleep, etc. Food has massive effects uh, in our lives and in our health in general. So the point of nutrigenomics is to be able to choose the right foods, eat them at the right time and have the right quantity of them so that you can have a profound effect on your health, feel better, feel more energetic, feel more vibrant. Now, how do we actually get to know what food is the best for us? Because there's so many different sort of, sort of trendy diets and theories and uh, advices that we get, but realizing that there's no one single simple standard best diet in the world is the first very important realization. What works for you may not work for other people. Okay, just to give it a broader definition, nutrigenomics is the science which combines genetics and nutrition and studies their relationship. Now, an important point to make here is that nutrigenomics is uh, both involved in how nutrition or the foods we eat affect our gene expression, which is tightly related to in the health and health effects, and also how our predetermined genetic code or gene genes affect the food choices that we make on a daily basis. So someone will be genetically coded sort of to eat more sugars or to eat more fats or to eat less protein or more protein and we have to take this in consideration because not two people have the same genetic code. Now as we've said it studies the effect of foods, macronutrients and micronutrients on our uh, gene expression. Put simply, it studies the relationship of food constituents or diet or nutrients on gene expression as it was posted in the Nutrition Society. It is about how those components of food, nutritional components or bioactive compounds can affect our gene expression because then this gene expression affects how we feel, the health conditions, the energy we have, etc. So the point of nutrigenomics is to properly assess someone's genetics, someone's genetic profile so that we can have a greater and more con correct nutritional assessment when we are providing some meal planning or uh, optimizing their diet. So just a brief history of nutrigenomics, uh, we all know that certain uh, sort of herbs or supplements that were used back in Chinese medicine and Ayurveda in India, many of those foods and herbs long ago were said to, I don't know, increase libido, let's say, or promote uh, longevity or uh, increase energy, etc. And there is a specific reason behind this. It is no miracle that we've sort of seen how nutrition and food can affect the way we 
feel, the way we are fueled, the way we produce energy, etc. We've, for example, this is uh, an interesting one. We've all seen our grandmas make uh, opium uh, poppy filled pies since it acts as a natural painkiller, or our uh, grannies or uh, parents use turmeric teas because it reduces inflammation or ginger or any of that sort of uh, powerful antioxidant. Uh, even if they don't know or don't understand the physiology behind that, they will use it because it makes them feel better. The first time nutrigenomics as term was described by Pellegrin in 2001, and uh, we all know about the sort of uh, bringing up and development of uh, genetics and how it can show you a potential of developing certain uh, disease based on genetic tests. Now the thing is that the limitation is the potential to develop doesn't necessarily mean one will develop it. and. The point of nutrigenomics is to actually know what foods will fit our genetic profile the best so we can reduce the risk of potentially developing a certain disease. Okay? Now how can genetic tests improve the way we eat? If we can gain an insight into one's genetic profile, we can see which foods are um, sort of better for expression of the right genes that would result in sort of better health and which one will... Uh, turn on the genes that, are, that can be detrimental to our health. So the main goal of nutrigenomics by assessing these genetics is to sort of give us a structural guideline for optimization of one's diet. The aim is to find the weak spot in our genes. These are, uh, for example, there are people who are intolerant to lactose or have high sensitivity to sugar. And when we find these weak spots, we can um, better prepare or optimize the meal plan to fit their needs uh, in order to not cause digestive problems or to reduce the risk of developing certain diseases. For example, if someone's very sensitive to sugar or uh, lactose or have, has insulin problem, uh, he is going to be at a higher risk of having chronic inflammation in the gut and uh, developing celiac disease, etc. So the point is to find these weak spots and uh, if we find those we can say, okay, you're going to want to exclude or uh, reduce the amount of refined carbohydrates and total carbohydrates in general and you're going to want to sort of up your intake of healthy fats. This was just the first example for, for this one. Okay, then uh, we should include more of the foods that positively affect our gene expression or stimulate the expressions of genes that are known as healthy. Uh, then the third one is reducing the consumption of foods that lead to expression of certain genes known to lead to poor health. We said this before, and to optimize the consumption of drugs, compounds, supplements, chemicals that leads to better health. A typical example here is we have different enzymes uh, and different levels and functions of these enzymes for, for example, breaking down caffeine. And if we know that someone is very, very sensitive to caffeine, we're going to... Um, mm, sort of look into alternative ways to cut caffeine way before he goes to bed. So for example, at uh, 12 o'clock a.m. so uh, that he doesn't get these negative side effects uh, like disrupted sleep of too much caffeine. Some people will uh, be faster in metabolizing some drugs or compounds and others will be slower. And knowing this can uh, sort of help us manipulate the way we take certain supplements or drugs like caffeine. So only by understanding our genes we can understand the way our biology works and have better insight into what happens in our body and our digestive system, okay? So now it's the importance of individualizing nutrition, right? Uh, DNA is like the most individual thing an individual has, like there's no... You can tweak and manipulate a fitness program or a nutritional plan based on someone's needs and habits, but like DNA is the most, the highest level of individualization. It's a very uh, specific human code. It's sort of the boss which gives us instructions on how to replicate, develop, and regenerate. And so if we eat the right foods and can cause uh, expression in the genes that are related to good health, uh, then uh, we can potentially optimize our health and performance. Okay, and there's a little fun fact here, uh, that even hundreds of years ago with medicine, science and engineer being at such lower stage in their development, people sort of knew that food had tremendous effects on our health, they just couldn't quantify. And this is fascinating to me how even our primal ancestors would sort of know this stuff and sort of pick some foods over the others. But 
as the world develops and as we have more sedentary lifestyles and we can pick more sugars, it's so much easier for us to pick sugars because when we do it for consistently over a long period of time, we feed the bad bacteria in our gut and it's gonna just drive the cycle upwards. It's, gonna, it's just gonna look for more sugars and more sugars and it's gonna create even more cravings. So as we've discussed, the humans are gonna be very different at uh, metabolizing and digesting food. Uh, some can tolerate milk or milk products. Uh, some can fight free radicals and oxidative stress more efficiently. Others experience chronic inflammation in the gut regularly. Some genotypes will be better off consuming plant-based foods while others thrive on meat for uh, numerous benefits like brain health, libido, uh, concentration and cognition, muscle growth, etc. This is why we shouldn't really uh, put our uh, the diet that works for us on other people and say, look, the vegan diet or the carnivore diet worked for me and it's probably going to work for you because there's studies to confirm that. Maybe, but maybe not. We Some people are going to be more inclined towards eating certain diets than others and it's going to have to do a lot with their genes, genetic profile, and it's going to have a lot to do with the traditions, with the way they were brought up, with the way they have developed their gut microbiome, etc. So we shouldn't be too judgy or sort of imply that one or a certain food or diet is the best or better than any other. But when a uh, nutrition plan takes into account all of this data from our genes, like variants, copies, and expression, which of course you're gonna have uh, someone who works at a laboratory, someone who understands genes and nutrition better uh, work at these things, uh, then we can only fill in the gaps that we cannot otherwise see or know of because we don't have, this is an interesting one, we don't have appetite for vitamin D, vitamin B12 or iron. We are going to have appetite for calories because we want more energy or we're going to have more appetite for sugars because we crave it but we're never really going to know unless we do a blood test and unless we do a genetic test, we're not really going to know uh, how we are wired and what do we lack or what do we have too much of, okay? Now, the most interesting part, the potential benefits of implementing nutrigenomics into your life uh, is, of course, to sort of fill in the gaps of nutrition uh, and optimize the, <clears throat> the food we eat to sort of get the maximum out of the way our physiology and digestion works. So, it's not just about implementing the right ratio of macronutrients, to so put it in context. So, Incorporating more of the specific macronutrients our bodies can't absorb and optimizing the way we consume alcohol, coffee, or drugs can have a profound effect on health. So, it is about seeing what we have a lot of, what we have a little of, what we need more of, and it is about optimizing the way we can consume those compounds and drugs so they don't dis our sleep or we can uh, sort of metabolize and utilize them in the most profound and efficient way. By individualizing one's diet uh, in terms of nutrigenetics, we can improve overall health and well-being, reduce chronic inflammation and oxidative stress, potentially stabilize blood sugars and insulin level, uh, reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease, metabolize drugs in a better way uh, in terms of manipulating the timing and quantity of drugs, absorbing vitamins and minerals better, controlling our cholesterol level levels, HDL to LDL, but also improving the cholesterol profile, improve insulin sensitivity and potentially reduce insulin resistance, improve our overall sleep quality and manage stress better. And the last thing is healthy versus unhealthy eating habits and uh, the, the main point here is that the habits that are recognized as unhealthy are actually the ones that cause gene expression that are related or associated to poor health. For example, having too little calcium or vitamin D is going to result in uh, reduced bone mineral density, which can cause osteoporosis, etc. etc. Also, you know, the trans fats, which are unstable, can increase gene expression related to oxidative stress and uh, chronic inflammation. And uh, when you combine all this stuff, we can sort of come with a, a vague and rigid uh, separations between what's healthy and unhealthy, but nutrigenomics is here to sort of take care of the complexity of this and optimize this for your diet. Now, for example, uh, for unhealthy habits, we've seen that consumption of deep fried foods or excessive consumption of processed red meats or high amounts of simple or refined carbohydrates, excessive alcohol or drug consumption and smoking are related to poor health and express genes that are related to poor health, okay? 
On the other side, many biohackers nowadays consume relatively large portions of red meat, which is of higher quality, it's grass-fed with fewer toxins and pesticides, and they also find found a way to implement it in their, di in their diet better and to prepare it in a better way to reduce oxidation. Other behaviors like drinking more water uh, or eating more greens or switching to complex carbohydrates or eating enough uh, omega-3s and antioxidant-rich foods have been shown to promote longevity to sort of support our metabolism, our immune system, our hormone secretion, etc. and have been sort of associated with good health more. Okay, just for conclusion, uh, nutrigenomics is the science that focuses on the effects of foods and their constituents on our gene expression. It discovers how genetics influence the way we absorb, digest, metabolize, and utilize specific foods, compounds, vitamins, and minerals, and drugs. Nutrigenomics can help the structure an optimal and individualized nutrition plan that takes our genes into account. Thanks a lot for watching, that's around it for this video and I hope I'll see you in the next one. Subscribe for more of this kind of biohacking, health related, uh, fitness related type of content. I'll see you in the next one.